Oh my god. <laughs> we're here. We are here. We're talking about this. I cannot believe we're talking about this. For those of you who are out there, thank you last time in the previous Montreal Canadiens video. If you're a Habs fan checking out this video, thank you for commenting about Rick DiPietro in the comment section of yesterday's video because, you know, I wanted to put that out there just as a little aside for those of you who wanted to show me that you actually made it to the end of yesterday's video. So stay tuned to the end of this video to potentially get your name featured in the next Habs video where we showcase what people were saying about our keywords. But today we're talking about a guy who is not a Montreal Canadiens guy. But he's so closely linked to the organization in terms of his overall reputation that I just had to go over this, man. We saw this rumor pop up a few months ago, and it was reinforced earlier this week. So I'm just going to come out and say it, you know, Montreal Canadiens former defenseman Carl Alsner. Let's talk about whether or not he could, would, or should go to the Boston Bruins. And I'll say this right here, man. This was started back in October, when an article on Boston Hockey Now was published by Joe Haggerty, and he says this, A source says that the Boston Bruins have interest in Carl Alsner as a veteran insurance option. Now, who exactly is Carl Alsner? Well, he is a 32-year-old left-handed defender, 6'3", 214 pounds from Burnaby, B.C. Oh, man, my heart's going out to Burnaby 110%. They make the EA video games that I use to record my footage, and I went to college in Burnaby. So, that's awesome. But he indeed has been with the Montreal Canadiens for the past few seasons, up and down between the Canadiens and the Rocket. He was bad. Like, straight up, he was bad. He couldn't stick around, and this contract was huge. He's currently a UFA because he was bought out by the Montreal Canadiens, and that was a move that a lot of Habs fans were over the moon about because he was a guy who was making quite a significant amount of money on the cap hit. If you want to take a look at the actual number, he was bought out of his five-year $23 million contract, so just under $5 million AAV for a guy who was playing in the AHL because he wasn't good enough to be in the NHL. And now, as an NHL free agent, he is free to go wherever he wants. He was a very good key contributor to the Washington Capitals, playing just under a decade with that squad. Now, he was never really a point-producing machine, but he was very consistent, he stayed in the lineup, he had a good presence, he helped them win. Admittedly, they ended up winning the cup after he left for Montreal, but, you know, he was still there and he was still good, even with the Montreal Canadiens. You know, he played 82 games, he had 12 points, not the most offensively productive guy, but he was there, he was in it to win it, and the Canadiens actually did use his services. Now, whether or not you want to say his services back then, when he played 82 games, were good or bad or whatever, it's kind of water under the bridge right now, I guess. He was a guy, he was pretty okay, I guess. And I say I guess like that because I guess. But he was indeed bad towards the end of his tenure. A lot of Habs fans are like, okay, why is this guy even in the lineup? This guy cannot compete. He is not really doing the right things out there on the ice, which is why he ended up going to the AHL. He spent the majority of his Habs tenure in the Laval Rocket system. And, you know, I'll give all props to the guy. The guy came out here, and after he was bought out by Montreal, he had a very heartfelt letter that he posted onto Twitter. And a lot of Habs fans are like, yeah... I appreciate it. I appreciate the sentiment, the kind feelings. There's no ill will here. Carl Alsner will use your cap space for the better, buddy, but thank you for your services. But now, sources have come out talking about how the Boston Bruins might indeed be in the ballpark of giving a Carl Alsner-like guy a veteran 7th D role. This article we're looking at right here was published back in October, but there was another article published earlier in December it was like five days ago when this article was published. This one's an actual mailbag. It's the hags bag kind of thing. It's kind of a funny name, you know. And it's where viewers out there, they ask Joe Haggerty questions and he answers them. Take a look at this. A question from Just You Know Why. Do you see any PTOs for Boston? If so, who? If not, why? One PTO I could potentially see is a player I already wrote about a couple of months ago in Carl Alsner. With the Bruins potentially going very young with their decor, they could use a low-priced veteran or two, particularly on the left side where they may be losing Zdeno Chara and Tori Krug, 
and a proven defenseman like Alsner could be good insurance in case youngsters like Zaborl or Vakanainen aren't ready for prime time. Certainly, there's a chance that the Bruins might get a quality player like Anthony Duclair on a PTO because of the fiscal landscape in the NHL right now, but I suspect that players like Duclair and Granlin will eventually sign guaranteed contracts rather than tryouts for training camp, so they won't be available for PTOs. But in general, I would think a veteran D-man and a potential goal-scoring top nine winger would be a pair of places you might see the Bruins bring in a veteran, given that it sounds like NHL rosters are going to be expanded, given the unique circumstances of the upcoming season amongst the pandemic. So... <laughs> here we go, man. PTO, Carl Alsner. Is this the way we're going to go here? Alsner being one of the only players to go from the Montreal Canadiens to the Boston Bruins in subsequent seasons. Don't quote me on that. That's just me kind of spitting out there. Somebody want to actually do research? When was the last time we had a player or a group of players go from the Montreal Canadiens to the Boston Bruins in subsequent years? Does that happen a lot? probably happened a lot in the original six, right? But, like, what about now? I know in the NHL there are some teams that, like, straight up refuse to trade with each other. There was one of the New York teams, I believe, or maybe my memory is failing me, where the history goes that these two teams have never made a trade with each other, ever. It's on the tip of my tongue. I can't really say it right now because it's not coming to me. But for Carl Alsner... How funny would it be if this guy goes out there, he signs a PTO with Boston, he makes the team because their left side defensive depth is lacking. This guy goes out there and he's playing on the left side, maybe he's a seventh defenseman, he comes in every three or four games or whatever when guys are taken out with injuries or if they're deemed unfit to play because we're still going to have that status, I guess, going into the NHL's new year. And you see this guy go from Montreal to Boston. Now, I will say, Montreal and Boston are not going to play. That's kind of how it goes. Canadian division, and you also have the East division. They're separate, so Montreal and Boston will not actually play each other, maybe until the postseason. But even then, you know, how funny would it be to have a Bell Center? Let's say it's like the middle of 2021. People started getting vaccinated and all that. We're opening up the fans to go into the arenas a little bit more. All of a sudden, you have Carl Alsner out there in the Bruins in Game 7 in overtime, and he scores a goal, and oh, I didn't want to sprinkle in some nightmare fuel here on this video. I'm sorry about that. But it is indeed something that does make sense on paper, because as Haggerty writes about it over here, no more Chara, no more Krug. You guys have Lozon and Gritzlick over there on the left side. You guys need some more guys to fill in that role. There's talks about Hannafin, which is why this is so important, because if you guys get Hannafin, you guys don't need to go after a Carl Alsner. Obviously, though, a Hannafin is going to cost you other stuff because you're going to need to trade for that guy from the Calgary Flames. But... For Carl Alsner, hopefully, if he does get an NHL job next year, hopefully he actually does bounce back, you know? Even though I'm a Habs fan and I saw how this guy really just wasn't all too great with Montreal towards the end, you know, we still like seeing good people exhibit and do good things in life, and Alsner showed to the rest of the Habs fan base that yes, even though he was bought out, he still has very positive feelings to the city, to the team, etc., and that in itself is respectable. So, if he goes out there, signs a PTO with Boston, sure, it'd be kind of weird, but like... Yeah, I'd rather see him go out there and try to revitalize his career with Boston than with Montreal because, hey, a five-something, less than five AAV contract for a few more seasons definitely isn't something that I would like to have. I'd rather see Romanov do his thing, which is what we're going to see next year. Edmondson, Sherratt, and Romanov on that left side. Victor Mete, how do you do, buddy? How are you doing, Victor Mete? But talk to me in the comments what you think about this whole idea over here. If you're a Boston Bruins fan, what do you think about getting Carl Alsner? Spoiler alert, he was not great last year. He really wasn't. He was okay in the AHL, but if you're talking about his NHL performance, yeah, there's a reason why this guy played the majority of his past two seasons in the AHL. Despite the fact that he was a pretty consistent 82-game player for the previous, like, decade, or half a decade and a little bit before his AHL stints in Laval, but... Talk to me regardless. Would you want to see this instead of a Zaboral or a Vakaninen, assuming one of those guys or two of them are not ready for the big show yet? The big show, WWE. Really good wrestler. And then you have yourselves the Montreal side. How would you feel seeing Carl Alsner revitalize his career? Honestly, I'd be fine with it, but... I want you to tell me in the comments below what you think also. If you made it to the end of this video, tell me in the comments below what's your favorite kind of candy or chocolate. And the reason I'm asking this is because mine, I'm going to choose Hershey's. And Hershey is where 
Carl Alsner played in the AHL before he was a full-time Washington Capital. So Hershey's Kisses is my little answer right there. Talk to me in the comments about what your favorite candy chocolate is or whatever. I like to have a discussion about that too. Getting kind of hungry over here. But aside from that, I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye. <laughs>